somite formation. Uh, the picture on the right-hand side shows a 31-day-old embryo uh, in the lateral view, and in green we can see the head and the six branchial arches, and then along the dorsum we see in yellow these segments of somites. And there is the cervical somites and thoracic and lumbar somites as well as sacral somites. And then we have at the tail end some of these coccygeal and then more cranially pre- and post-otic somites that we're not going to really consider. All together in yellow and purple, there's 40 to 42 somites in humans. We're going to focus on the, uh, the somites uh, highlighted in those dotted lines, so the 8 cervical, 12 thoracic, 5 lumbar, and 5 sacral somites. And we're going to take one of those segments, take a cross-section through it, and ta-da, there we have this cross-section through a somite and one somite highlighted in yellow. And in this picture, there's the neural tube will become the spinal cord. Neural crest cells become the dorsal root ganglion. And simply for orientation, there's the gut tube with the associated salomic cavity. And all on the other side, shing, there we've got the somite. So let's talk about the dermatome, myotome, and sclerotomal components, those three elements that comprise these condensations of periaxial mesoderm that we know as the somites. So first in pink, we have the dermatome. These dermatomal cells are more superficial in this somite, and they're going to migrate out and become the dermis of the skin of the back. The overlying ectoderm is derived, uh, it becomes the epithelium, the dermatome becomes the skin of the back. And as you go forward more and you get this ring, as you can see in this picture in pink, the body wall and the skin of the limbs comes really from the somatic part of the lateral plate mesoderm, but it's from the seg same segment, so the principle's the same. And there we have in pink this ring of skin. And in yellow, there's our spinal nerves. And so the dorsal root the dorsal ramus primarily sends off branches to provide sensory innervation of this, the dermis of the dorsum of the back. And then this ventral ramus courses and gives rise to a lateral branch that provides sensory innervation of the lateral part of this band of dermis. And then it terminates as an anterior cutaneous branch, which then sends sensory information from the front. And therefore, when we see this entire band in, in pink, um, it's provide, it's innervated by all the branches bilaterally of dorsal and ventral rami, and it forms this ring of innervation of the skin. Hence, the clinical definition of a dermatome, an area of skin supplied by a single spinal nerve level. The segmental happens eight times in cervical, 12 thoracic, and so forth. Myotome is the region highlighted in purple and red because the myotome has two parts. The epimere, which are these cells that migrate more dorsally to the ep, um, epi for upon, the, the, the top part of this developing embryo. And these cells are going to develop into the erector spinae muscles. Whereas the hypomere in red, these cells migrate more ventral laterally and they form the body wall muscles hypo below on the bottom of this em developing embryo but in the cervical and lumbosacral regions becomes muscles of the limbs uh, the yellow arrow shows these um, the uh, epimere becomes these epaxial muscles and the dorsal ramus that dorsal branch will innervate not only the skin of the back but also these uh, epimere, uh, epaxial muscles like erector spinae in uh, the hypomere, uh, these cells form the hypaxial muscles, which is four layers of lateral body wall, a subvertebral group of muscles, and the ventral strap muscles. And as I mentioned before, in the cervical and lumbosacral region, myotomes, hypomere components of the myotomes become muscles of the limbs. The ventral ramus branch will innervate all muscles of the body wall and the upper and the lower limb muscles. Uh, finally, in green, there we have the sclerotome, and these sclerotomal cells will migrate and surround this developing neural tube, which will become the spinal cord, and so there we've got that neural tube surrounded by these bony segmental elements we know as vertebrae with these costal components, and these are segmentally from top to bottom, and so they protect the spinal cord, but there's spaces in between for the spinal nerves to exit at each segmental level and also allows for some flexibility. So here we have that picture now. Um, highlighted with the dermatome, epaxial, hypaxial muscles, and the sclerotomal component. Looking at this lateral view yet again, and we take one segment, and shing, we blow that up, and there we have a segment. All those components of vertebral, spinal cord, spinal nerve levels with dermatomes and myotomes. But how about this level? Same thing. At that level, there is a 
vertebral level, spinal cord level, associated spinal nerve with dermatome and myotome. Oh, what about this level? And the same thing. The key to this is to recognize that every single uh, segmental level of eight cervical, 12 thoracic, five lumbar, five sacral levels, there is going to be a vertebral level element. Um, there's a vertebral element. There's going to be a spinal cord element. There's going to be a spinal nerve element with a dermatome and myotome. Those three themes we're going to see over and over again now as we look at the neurological um, uh, levels of, of each of these regions.